Hello Noble Ones, Hello, Matt Noble Easton here Noble. and Raffaello from the Metatron, the Metatron channel. channel. He spread his wings and came over here yeah. uh, to film a, not only to film, he's, he, you, well, you're just on holiday on aren't you? On a holiday, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but anyway, so I've brought him down to sunny it is today, it has been horrifically horrible weather recently, I'm mm. sorry about that. Mm. Yeah, I was um, expecting it. Well, who expects to come to England and be rained on? It's, uh, <laughs> but, um, but it's actually sunny today and we're in Arundel in West Sussex, one of my favourite um, favourite of the shires and one of my favourite places. Arundel Castle behind us there, hopefully you can see, which we're going to go into. Um, uh, but anyway, I asked earlier, as in today that we're filming this, um, I asked you for some questions that maybe Raf and me could answer mm -hmm. uh, on camera. And I think we're going we're gonna to look at them now. We're going to go yes. through them, pick out a few that jump out at us, and maybe we'll do some for my channel, some for Raf's channel. So have a look at both channels. Um, we'll try and kind of time up to a releasing at a roughly similar time maybe. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're going to have a look now at your questions and we'll be right back. So I've got the first question here is posted on our Facebook page link below um, from Alex Cheng asks um, Spa J just kidding he says okay well we can't spa no. I do actually have a load of equipment in the back of my car no, because I wouldn't destroy you. I'd be too. I'd be too nice. Yeah, to no, but anyway, we're not going to do that because we'd probably get arrested. Because this is the UK, yeah. and if anyone talks violently, you get I don't know deported or something. But um, I could uh, be deported to Sicily. <laughs> you could be deported back to Sicily. I'd come with you. Um, but Alex Cheng said, "Well, how have we managed to come this far?" And we haven't actually asked the question yet, right? So he says, um, "How do you? How do you actually say chorizo or chorizo or chorizo?" Yeah, how is chorizo? So it's so Raf hasn't seen the video, no, and he doesn't know what this is. No. So it's a type of Spanish salami. Oh, okay, then it's probably chorizo. Chorizo. Because yeah, there you go. So also on the um, on the Facebook page, um, Jacob Bjorno Klunda or Klunda, I think, maybe a Norwegian name. Sorry about the messages, that's Pedro messaging me. Shut up Pedro, by the way, if you're watching this. Um, which language contains the best insults, mm. Italian or English? What yeah, would you say? Would well, you know what? My, mi italiano è merda. Uh, but uh, uh, is that, is that, does that even make sense what I just said? Uh, italiano, uh, no. 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 Okay. I mean, I understand you, okay, but okay. I wouldn't say it that way. So yeah, I can't really, I can't really answer that question as well as Raf can because mm. you can speak fluent English and mm. Italian. Mm. I can only speak rubbish Italian, only yeah. only a little bit. I mean, I don't know that I, many insults. I know Fafanculo, I tested the cazzo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. Am I going to yeah. be? Am I going to be demonetized in, in uh, YouTube Italy? I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm fluent in insults. Say yeah, definitely Italian. Italian's no got the question. best insults, no but don't most Italian insults centre around the mother? Um, some do, yeah, that's true. <laughs> because I, it seems to me, I was thinking about this the other day. If you want to make an Italian guy really angry, you say oh, something yeah, about yeah, his yeah. mother. Oh gosh, yeah. And I have seen Italian guys in Italy practically in tears mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. tears, but and furious yeah, because yeah, someone yeah, has yeah. said something about his mother. Yeah, yeah. It's mother, quite, sister, it's cousin, very and, strong. Yeah, the whole family thing. I think, Whereas yeah. in 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 Britain, if you can, yeah, it's just like it's yeah. like nothing. It's like no, no, the kids they can yeah, you can get. Some and also I have to say probably most of a lot of uh, the insults that we use in Britain now are probably in their root American as mm. well I see um, yeah yeah I guess uh, but yeah I mean we do have some quite good insults obviously we can't actually channel because no. uh, because that we don't know who's listening but <laughs> yeah. but basically uh, I would say I'm going to move back on this because he's got the superior knowledge okay so Italy wins Definitely. one for Italy yeah. zero for Britain yeah I mean you just need to see how they drive when people <laughs> drive here Lisa, but yeah, in Italy, and like, the hands as well. And I think you have to get extra points for hands as well yeah. because the, because the Eng so the English. If you're insulting someone, you do this. Yeah. You bring your hands back and you stick yeah. your chest out. Yeah. Uh, whereas the Italians, oh, 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 oh. so you've got double hands, dual double, wielding, dual, wield dual wielding hands with the insults. Okay, yeah. so Italian win. Right, let's have a look at the next question. Okay, so the next question on uh, YouTube is from Tom Rogers. Hi, Tom. Hi, Hope Tom. you're doing well. Um, and you say, can you ask Metatron or the Metatron? Do you prefer Metatron or the Metatron? I always put the article there. 
Okay. Yeah. But he says, can you ask Metatron to expand on how the Lombards and Goths, so Visigoths, yes, um, affected Italian culture? I should imagine right. they affected it quite violently in yeah. the first stages. Yeah. But uh, over to Raf. Yeah, I think what's interesting, and I was talking about, about this the other day with a friend, an English friend of mine, and the thing is, um, Italian culture as a whole is a very recent culture. The concept of Italy as one country is recent. So when you say, like, whatever it be, whether it be the Visigoths, whether it be any population that came to Italy, we need to see what area of Italy they came to and how they influenced that specific kind of language, Italian and, and, and uh, customs and everything. Because, for example, they wouldn't really affect my area. Or like the Normans affected Sicily but didn't affect that much Rome for example so Italy again is very very recent uh, I would say what 170 160 years since unification yeah. yeah and before that we all spoke our own languages in fact even now Italian regions if my dad is from the north and I'm from the further south as you can get so if we speak standard we can communicate but if we speak our local dialects we can we are not mutually intelligible we cannot understand <laughs> each other we, we tried that a few times so of course again how other population, external population have affected Italy, I would rather say how they have affected the regions where they've been. So obviously the areas of the most um, gothic um, influence, or Visigoths, I mean, for example, I know in, is it Verona's actually got um, so, yeah. sort of late Roman style uh, frescoes or whatever, where you can actually see Visigothic leaders or something. Yeah, and and so, so yeah, so the northern half of Italy Definitely. is clearly the part that would Definitely. have been the most affected Definitely. by those invading peoples. But I, I I get the impression, as an Anglo-Saxon, <laughs> as an English person, yes. so our culture was, our, uh, the, the culture of Britain was completely changed after the Roman era. Um, for whatever reason, say, say partially invasion, partially cultural shift, whatever. Whereas in, in Italy, there was more continuity, I think. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, obviously, within the Byzantium, there was more continuity. Mm -hmm. But I think within Italy, there was as well. And to me, it seems like the Visigoths became Italians mm, rather yeah, than yeah. them turning the Italians into Visigoths you know well. you still spoke speak a Latin language yes you were still Christian yes. blah 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 yeah probably wasn't as strong enough as a as a, as a conquest they, to actually completely no. shape the situation no I mean I get the impression they were just really a ruling elite like the Normans were like later and yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so 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 how did they affect Italian? I would imagine they will affect some of the dialects for example because sometimes mm. for example the dialect uh, from uh, where, that my father speaks in the northeast, um, it has a lot of connections to uh, maybe German or to other languages, for example, and that that you don't find down south, and that's why the words are actually different sometimes. And then I would imagine if again if they get married with people, you know, of that local area, that's why when you go to Italy and you find ginger hair, you find blue eyes, you find mm. like I'm a typical dark hair, dark eyes person. But even in Sicily itself, you've got like Norman blood people. Yeah. And you get blondes with blue eyes. I mean, I've always wondered how genetically similar, for example, southern Italians are oh, with Greek people, for example. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Because, even, I mean... Even Puglia. Yeah. Uh, or Calabria. Yeah. Uh, but particularly, yeah, Sicily, particularly the eastern side, is very Greek. Yeah, yeah. And definitely, definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have the colonies. And, you know, there's a similar look. And, I mean, you know, I know you can't judge everything from that, but, mm -hmm. but you know, you look at someone from Sweden, yeah. they look different yeah. to someone yeah. from, yeah. from Palermo, Absolutely. you know, from, from, Absolutely. from Sicily. Absolutely. Uh, whereas people from Sicily look, relatively speaking, more similar to, to Greek people. Yeah. And but they, not the same. But not the same, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it's probably, it's, I mean, Sicily was, at the end of the day, in a very strategic position. Yeah. yeah. And it, everybody wanted Sicily. <laughs> for and also it's surrounded by water and therefore yeah. you're going to get more di different people coming through and, yes, uh, and, yes, and yes, moving yes. around and it's it's in the middle of uh, civilization really yeah. as it was yeah. in, in the ancient world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, okay, I hope that kind of answers your question. Um, uh, and uh, I'm sure there's a lot more to be said about the, the Longobards. And I mean, I, uh, in archaeology, I'm aware of the fact that there are specific weapons associated with the Longobards. For example, they're quite famous for a type of battle axe um, that has a hammer on the back. And that type of axe is occasionally found in Francia mm. and occasionally found in Anglo-Saxon England. There's one in the British Museum, actually, that was found in England. So maybe they were traded. Maybe it was a random Longobard who emigrated. Who knows? Um, but that type of axe is found a lot in, in northern Italy from the migration era. By the way, doesn't the, the name Longobard comes from the idea of long beards? Is it could do. I've heard different theories, and uh, theories because of 
the word bard is also related to, to axe, but, uh, okay, so but then axes. but that could also be related to beard because of the shape of an axe. So, right, yeah, so we don't know. We don't. One, it's yeah. a chicken and egg thing. We chicken don't really egg, know. Yeah. So, right. um, but yeah, there we go. Hope that helps. Uh, let's go on to the next question. <laughs> so next question comes from Cherry Cherry Chairman. What a brilliant name. Um, who seems to have a, an avatar of a or picture of a. I don't even know what that is. What is it? You tell us underneath, Cherry Cherry Chairman. Um, carbonara or bolognese? Oh. Carbonara, carbonara. Carbonara? carbonara. Well, it depends what you're having it with, doesn't it, really? But I, I, I've got to say, if I have a choice between spaghetti carbonara, spaghetti bolognese, yeah. for me, carbonara. But then again, I wouldn't really, really put spaghetti with bolognese. I would say, well, you can, but I would put like tagliatelle or, or meatballs. Or, yeah. You can do. No, no, be, meatballs. Oh, well, it's, no. it's got mince in it, hasn't it? Bolognese, it does, I suppose. It does, yeah, it yeah. does. I would like tagliatelle as a form of pasta, I think that's what <laughs> <laughs> this is this is more involved than I was expecting. <laughs> yeah. But more or less, we both agree carbonara. Uh, yeah, I think carbonara. That's a bombshell, guys. Mm -hmm. Scholar Gladiatoria, Metatron, we agree, carbonara. Carbonara. So Lightning97 says, which one of you is best uh, at Mountain Blade? Oh. Well, we don't know. I, we so, should have a, so I a just before we started filming, I asked Raf. I said, "Do you play mountain blade?" Because otherwise, that's a completely irrelevant question. Mm. But apparently, you do. Yeah. Do. Wh which part? Wh what type do you play? Uh, it depends. I like mounted combat a lot. Do you play warband yes. though? And you do the medieval. So I mostly play Napoleonic Wars. Oh yeah, I've seen some of your videos. Yeah, yeah. Saying, yeah. I might do some more of that actually because yeah. it's quite. You know, I spend a bit of time playing, so I may as well film. <clears throat> yeah, Sometimes it's funny. I see some really funny things happening. I'm sure you all do. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I, there are some really simple things in that game I love, like when someone gets shot when they're jumping, and it just yes. looks brilliant when they're jumping over a wall and then they get shot, and it does the uh, the kind of ragdoll man, okay. and they go oh, in the air. I just love that. I, you know, I know it's weird. Um, we'll have a duel eventually on mountain. What well, shall I tell you? What? I challenge you to a Mountain oh, wow. Blade duel. Let's do it. Okay. okay, so we're going to have a Mountain Blade uh, Warband duel, uh, standard native version. Um, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Do it. okay, so we'll do that and then we'll find out. Uh, I honestly don't know what weapons. Do you, so, we, so Raf says you normally like playing on horseback, yeah? Well, horseback, but if not, I like doing yeah, like this. One. Well, we could do a full knightly combat that starts oh, with horseback cool, and then yeah. goes to foot. Let's do that. Oh, yeah, let's do um, it. I, I quite like horseback as well. Um, so long as you don't go horseback archer, because no, I hate them. No. And what what weapons do you like to use on foot? Longsword. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I okay. I'm not. I usually use shield on foot, but um, I, yeah, I could, we could both go longswords. That could be quite fun. Yeah. Cool. Okay, we'll do that, and then we'll find out. It's the only chance I have to beat you with a longsword. Well, I don't know. You can, reality. Ah, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not that good with a longsword <laughs> anymore. Right. So let's go on to the next question. So, Riyad Bushnak asks, mm -hmm. um, sorry if I uh, butchered your name there, uh, do you think Sicilian weaponry mm. is influenced in any way by Islamic medieval weaponry mm. as a result of the Emirate of Sicily? Possibly, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know much about Sicilian yeah. weaponry. Was yeah, but there are some things, like for example, we have a, a actual specific Sicilian style of combat. Okay. I, I don't know how old it is, to be honest, I'll have to find out, but there is this thing, but it's, co it's called Bastone Siciliano. Oh, Sicilian stick, yeah. Sicilian okay. stick, yeah. and it's very, actually very nice. Uh, I've seen some, I know some practitioners, and I've been, and they, the, the things they do with the Sicilian stick are quite amazing. Uh, so anyways, com going back to the question, I would imagine, so I've seen some um, Saracen as well, can you say that word? Yeah, English? Saracen, yeah. Yeah, some Saracen shields and stuff, and uh, it could be, it could be. Yeah. Oh, now, I don't know to what extent, because I would have to do a little bit of research myself, yeah. but I would imagine so. Yeah, I, I know that there are later Sicilians, so, so there's um, there's at least one rapier treatise which mm. is from Sicily. Mm. Uh, a friend of mine, I think, uh, Carlo Parisi, who's from uh, up in the north actually, mm -hmm. but I think he's working on that. Uh, and I know there's some sort of uh, living traditions of knife fighting stuff in Sicily as yep. well. But going all the way back to, to the sort of... Um, the emirate, as it's called, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if do Sicilian weapons of, of medieval era look different to other Italian weapons. I don't. I think, as I say, maybe some, but I, I wouldn't know myself. Yeah. Actually, so I would have to. I'll do. I'll do a little bit of research. Yeah, and we'll perhaps make a video about. That it. would be a really good video for Raf to do. So there we go. Thank you for that question. Thank you. And hopefully there'll be some more on that in the future. Right. Let's look at the next question. So the Lord Arian says, I like your name, by the way. Very 
very good. Uh, with an ominous picture that looks like a ca- Assassin's Creed mm. um, character, whatever they're called. What's the Assassin's Creed? Ezio. Assass- Ezio. 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 Okay. I've never played those games. Ezio. So. Ezio. Ezio. Um, Mayamato, Mayamoto, Musashi, Miyamoto. <laughs> I'll let you do the Japanese names. Musashi and Alfred Hutton walk into a bar. Dot 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 dot. Uh, I assume that means do they do they fall in love with each other or do they fight each other? Mm. So if they fight each other, um, uh, who's going to win? Shut up, seagulls! <laughs> We've suddenly got lots of seagulls flying over. Yeah, We're quite near the coast. Uh, well, we have no way of knowing the answer to that, do we? No, and um, it's, it's difficult to it also because, I mean, when you have... You will have fanboys, of course, and they are the ones who normally answer these questions a lot. Yeah. I mean, in fairness, so most people imagine me going, Hutton, 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 but let's be frank about it. Hutton never fought in a real fight mm. and he never saw military action. His yeah. brother was actually in the charge of the light brigade mm-hmm. and was shot twice and sabred a load of Russians. So his mm. brother certainly saw action. His father saw action uh, in, I think in the Peninsula War. Maybe that was his uncle. Um, yeah, in case of Musashi, uh, allegedly he has been to a few battles. Mm. Um, but just uh, Some people even think that he has been to the Battle of Sekigahara, right. one of the most important samurai battles, although there is no way to confirm that. But definitely he was a man that knew duels and that knew actual battlefield. But yeah. So, and you know, H- undoubtedly Hutton was an excellent fencer uh, mm-hmm. and duelist. They would have fought. Imagine Mazashi's got a katana. Dual wielding. A katana Wagashi and a wagizashi, or two katanas. Katana and wagizashi. Yeah. So, um, so he's got a katana and a wagizashi, yes. and uh, Hutton would have a saber, mm. um, and. <sighs> The, pro- the problem, that, as I see it, is mm. that um, Masashi's probably going to have a very different mindset to, mm. to Hutton, mm. so he might come close. He might come close. He might come to grappling. Hutton's not going to be so used to that. Mm, mm, mm. Um, mm. Having said that, Hutton had done had done a bunch of um, stuff with close in, you know, grips and grapples. He talks about it in one of his later treatises, mm. um, The Swordsman. Uh, he talks about fighting an uncivilized enemy, which is what he would class Masashi as. Definitely, definitely, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, that's about it. And uh, so, so he was in theory prepared for that, but I don't think he'd ever actually done it. Um, and you know, Hutton might go for what he considers to be a disabling cut or thrust on Masashi, and Masashi might mm. think, "I'm going to take you with me," yeah. um, and basically go down fighting. So I think it could very easily result in a double kill. It could be a double kill. <laughs> well, that would be an um, interesting one to see. I mean. I mean, purely from a technical point of view, Musashi, no matter how skilled he was, mm. wouldn't be used to facing a 19th century no. Western yeah, swordsman, um, who'd be relying on the lunge and recover, a very long reach, using mm. the point a lot. Mm. Um, so he would have been more, I mean, yeah, he would have been used to facing people using Yari and, and other thrusting weapons. Yes. Um, but the, the sabre of the 19th century and the way it's used has very different strengths and weaknesses to a 16th century, uh, was he 16th century? Yeah, 15, yeah 16th century uh, Japanese swordsman. So I think, based on having seen people from very different styles against each other in the past, it could very easily lead to a double kill. So let's leave it there, a double kill, because that's therefore that should satisfy all parties, should we say. <laughs> let's move on to the next question. So Ron Stephen, yeah. you ask, where are you going for lunch? We're actually just about to go for lunch as it happens. Mm. Chinese, Italian, local pub, um, that would be a fun video, the Metatron versus English pub food. That, well, maybe you can do a video talking about English I pub could food, do, but yeah. we are actually probably going to go to a pub. Yes. So there we go. And I'm very happy about it because I really like pub food. It's interesting enough, you know, I, I don't like eating Italian when I'm not in Italy. <laughs> and, and not just because, I don't, you know, I'm sure that there are some Italians who opened up a restaurant here and it's good food. And it's not because of that, but it's because, I mean, I always eat Italian. Once yeah, I'm in yeah. England, I want to eat English. When in Rome? Do as the Romans do. Yeah, because yeah. the Romans are always. You know, so there we go. English pub food, uh, which is pretty good actually. And I know people say bad things about English food, but there are some things we do oh, pretty well. Good things. I I I would challenge people to find a pie, and I don't mean the American kind of like no, sw- dessert, sweet, you know, like no, a pudding yeah. pie. I mean a pie. Anywhere so in the great. world that makes a pie as well as we do in Britain. I think we make the best pies. And whenever, when I used to spend a lot of time in France, pretty much the first thing I do when I come back to Britain is uh, come and have a pie. Yeah, they're good with pastry. You are good with pastry. Yeah, pastry. Yeah. yeah. 
Right, next question. <laughs> you just have to wait while uh, Raf is sorting out his, <laughs> there, his yeah. lovely long hair. Really? You don't have that problem on my, my no. channel. We're much more efficient. Oh, the wind. <laughs> okay. I'll be the wind. <laughs> so, you find it cold here, don't you? Yeah, it's freezing it's cold. It's hilarious because it's a nice warm spring day to me. It's freezing cold. <laughs> right, so Rami Berry, I mm. think I... So, so you, Rami, you make a lot of questions on my uh, channel. Thank you very much for that. I suspect you probably do on uh, Raf's as well as well. But, um, so you ask, here's my question. Question. Did Roman gladiators really fight single-handedly against huge predators such as lions and tigers in the arena? If yes, how was it done? Yeah, as far as we know, they did. But the thing that we need to understand is that gladiatorial games were entertainment. Yeah. So in films and movies, particularly American movies, what we see all the time is that gladiators die and die and die again. But that would have been extremely pricey. And we're on the other hand, if you look at the actual lists of tell us about how many of them died. Yes, some did, but it wasn't like the every single fight in the gladiatorial arenas meant that everybody had to die. And we know that they were medically treating them as Absolutely. well. We know that they were fixing them up. And that's something you hardly ever see in TV and movies, Indeed. is a gladiator getting wounded, yeah. at, or you know, being having a non-fatal fight, essentially, mm. and then being fixed up. Because, as you say, they're, exp they're an expensive commodity. Years of training yeah. and all that, and people wanted to see them back, you know, because they, yeah. if they always get them die, you don't get like the, the champions and the sort of situation you get with footballers now. Yeah. And so in the same way, I think with animals, either they would, I don't know if they would drug them, I don't know if they would put them in a, like, yes, one lion, but against five very well equipped gladiators, they can take them on. So I think it would really depend on that. Yeah, I... I <sighs> I, I mean, I would say slightly on the other side, I would mm. say the animals themselves were expensive as well. I mean, I don't know, I know that they had lions fairly easily because mm. obviously the, the Romans were in Africa and had access mm. to Africa. Mm. But a tiger, I don't know if there's any evidence of them ever having tigers. In uh, indeed, in fact, actually there is. Was uh, it Fiore who... There's one thing about Führer that there is one animal that he draws. He has a he has tiger. No yeah, but yeah. he draws in a weird way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, right? It's it probably. Like yeah, yeah. He'd never seen it. <laughs> He'd never seen, seen it. it. Yeah, it looks like a. That. It looks like a cross between a dog and a squirrel. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. With yeah. stripes. He knew it had stripes. That was <laughs> yeah. about as far as he went. But yeah, in, in the Roman era, I mean, we know that there's <clears> there were some things from India. Um, and you know the further parts of Asia traded into uh, Europe that, that, that the Romans did get hold of but a tiger an animal a living animal is quite a difficult mm. thing to transport because especially if it's a dangerous animal oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you've you got to it feed it and you yeah. know think how many um, animals would die in transit yes I know I mean they certainly had giraffes and elephants and lions and things from Africa because as yeah. I say Africa was easier for them to get yes. stuff from um, but from India I'm not sure but that's a tangent yeah. I think uh, Regardless, these animals were difficult and expensive to transport, and so they possibly were not wanting to slaughter huge numbers of lions. No. Probably just for some something really, really uh, important. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the famous thing about you know having Christians eaten by lions yeah. or yeah. you know torn apart by lions. Mm -hmm. um, that in that case, the lions were just getting fed. fed they, the li lions weren't getting damaged. No. But there was this. I can't remember what they're called, but there is a specific type of gladiator that mm. was sp uh, specifically for these killing animals mm. games. But as I understand it, they usually did it with things like. Um, uh, like large herd animals mm -hmm. and with um, bears and, I think, yeah. and boars, wild boars and things like this. So it was more like simulating a hunt yeah. in the arena. Yeah. And now well, they, they did simulate everything in the arena. Yeah. Battles, naval <coughs> battles. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, makes sense. And but in terms of how does a so I think for, I think you were asking also from a technical fighting point of view, a martial point of view, how does a person single-handedly kill a lion or a tiger mm. with a hand weapon? Well, the fact is, it's not that difficult if you're if you've got guts and you're trained to do it. Um, certainly, with something like a spear. I mean, people. If you go on YouTube, folks, you can watch videos of lions being killed with spears. Okay. There is lots and lots of black and white film and some colour film of Maasai in, in Africa um, killing lions and spears. Admittedly, they're usually in a group, but you yeah, can do it single-handedly, um, especially if you have a shield. Uh, there are hunting scenes, I know from manuscripts, <coughs> which show a cloak being used. So you put a cloak on one arm, mm. roll it, mm -hmm. um, and hold it in front of you, and then you use your spear or your sword for stabbing. And the animals, not being very clever, tend to go for the padded arm, hold okay. on to it. Meanwhile, you're shanking them with the weapon you're yeah, holding. Um, if you've got a shield, if you've got something like a scutum, where then yeah. the, the lion or the tiger can't really get to you, they're going to keep clawing and 
you know, trying to grab the shield, but yeah. so what? Um, and you can keep stabbing them. And really, how many stab wounds is something the size of a lion or a tiger going to be able to take before they succumb, yeah. before they bleed out or just mm -hmm. die? Not that many, okay? Um, so, unfortunately, <laughs> grim, grim though it is to think about, it's probably not that difficult to kill something that's the size of a, a uh, well, you know, it's smaller than a cow with, with a few stab wounds. They're mm -hmm. gonna go down. Mm -hmm. um, and they had armor, depending on the gladiator class. Yeah, and I would also throw in as well, in India, we know that people used to kill tigers with a tulwa, single-handedly, uh, and it was seen as a challenge, you know. Um, and also in Nepal, um, uh, people using kukris used to kill a tiger single-handedly with a nice. kukri, wow. with a kukri, a large yeah, knife, yeah. yeah. So with something that's smaller than a machete, uh, and I've described this on my channel before where they used to do this thing of um, the tiger, when it jumped, they used to traverse off to the side and slash its leading arm, um, so hobbling it in, with one of its arms, um, and then they'd hit it on the back of the neck, yeah, with the cookery bro. So there we go, people did it, basically. Right, on to the next question. So this is purely a question for Araf, um, or for Metatron. Um, so question for Metatron, and this is from Cameron Davis. Hi Cameron. Hello Cameron. Um, do you believe that Chinese popularity is fading and as far as is um, uh, as far as influence in the modern media is concerned. Everyone talks about Japan and how they love to learn to speak Japanese or how they love watching anime mm. and uh, how they would love to be a samurai. <laughs> yeah. uh, but not one single person my age, he's currently 17, um, that I know of has a favourite kung fu movie or, and it goes on. So essentially, do you think that uh, Chinese popularity is, from my, just throw yeah, in please. before, sorry to, no. I always get accused of speaking over my guests, so I don't want to be accused of doing that but from my perspective in Britain Japanese stuff has been popular for ages mm. and it goes all the way back to the 19th century when mm. Japanese um, you know uh, vases and even mm. Japanese swords and arms and stuff like that very popular for the items and have been for a long time whereas Chinese stuff is I suppose except uh, porcelain mm -hmm. uh, since which is 18th century really popularity in Britain. So actually Japanese stuff has been more popular, but I'll let you... No, it's a very interesting concept because, I mean, China, if you look at the dynasties and, you know, ancient China, then it was amazing. We are talking about, it's basically the ancient Greece of, the, of Asia. That's what China was. Yeah. Um, but now, definitely in the West, Japan has become the... the I'm not sure about Britain, but each high school student. And a lot of them, yeah, I have <laughs> Just trying to protect the mic from the wind. The wind yeah. Sorry for the wind noise, but we <laughs> can't do anything about that. We are in Britain, Britannia. <laughs> so um, now the a lot of my students, they, they, were, they are very much into Japan, Japanese uh, culture, and the Korean, like all the Korean um, singers, you know, all the girls love the Korean singers. And now a lot of people, <laughs> they want to learn Korean. So now it was like China, then because of Kung Fu and Bruce Lee, yeah. then Japan with Japanese anime and subculture, I would say, pop culture. But now it's becoming Korea. And I think if it continues this way, Korea might overcome Japan if they continue like that with the youth. So definitely it is happening. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's interesting as well, and you know, Japan's um, looking to reduce its population, it has an yeah. ageing population, yeah. lots of the younger Japanese people are not having uh, kids, and uh, Korea seems to be getting economically stronger and stronger and growing, and is, they're very, very different countries, despite the fact they're relatively close to each other and have some shared history, mm -hmm. not all of it friendly, um, but um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so... I think it's interesting. I, I I haven't seen much Korean influence in the UK okay. yet, but maybe it will. I mean, certainly in terms of industry, trade mm -hmm. and industry, there mm -hmm. is. But in terms of culture, not so much. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. but we'll see. Interesting times. An interesting question. Thank you very much. Thank you. So type sixteen, which is a reference to a type of uh, arrowhead, which is quite apt for this question. Type sixteen asks. Which medieval weapons do we both consider to be quintessentially Italian mm. and quintessentially English? Mm -hmm. Well, when, whenever I think of English, I would say longbow, Welsh yep. longbows, and, uh, and interestingly enough, like you were saying in one of your, of your videos, a lot of the of the wood was coming from Italy. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, yeah. So, so Italian and Spanish right, U. So was it is 
quintessential best, English, but... It, it well, funnily, so there was a tax. So there was a tax mm. for Italian um, traders, merchants coming into London, mm. whereby they had to, uh, if they wanted to trade, bring stock in to sell in London, they had to pay the tax in bow staves. Mm. So they were, instead of money, they were like, don't give us money, give us bow staves, because <laughs> alpine yew is fantastic. Yeah. It grows much denser uh, in the Alps, which results in essentially a very efficient and very powerful uh, long, long, long bow stave. Um, yeah. So yeah, so Itali ironically, the most famous English medieval weapon medieval. <laughs> was made of Italian <laughs> yeah. wood very often, or sometimes Spanish. Mm. Um, and there was sometimes um, uh, Polish, essentially Prussian uh, wood was used for long bows occasionally, but it was regarded as poorer quality, so it was cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry, Poland, uh, but um, but so quintessentially English weapon longbow, definitely. Mm. Um, For Italian, can can we say Genoese crossbow, perhaps? That's yeah, that's yeah, Genoese, definitely. Right? Actually, yeah, definitely the crossbow. Yeah, from Genoa. Um, what other thing? What were the Venetian? I suppose Venetians were also had quite a lot of crossbowmen as well. Right, yeah. I mean, we kind of get into naval. Yeah, the question of Warfare ships and larger and things ships, there. But yeah. if we're talking about personal, personal weapons, I suppose uh, that the, it's a little bit late for for medieval. But the cinque mm. uh, is a completely, you know, iconically Italian uh, weapon uh, that you don't really find outside Italy at all. A lot of the uh, famous Italian weapons, of course, were not uh, were not medieval. They're, like right, if you were talking yeah, about rapier yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. the side sword, things like this, they're they're post medieval, yeah, really. really. Um, <clears throat> So um, we could even say some uh, early early firearms. Some of the earlier handguns seem to have been quite um, quite popular in yeah. Italy earlier than they were in, in other fact, areas. In fact, it much depends on what area 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 we are talking about. Because I would say Gladius if we go all the way back. Yeah, but again, right. it's not medieval. <laughs> it's so not medieval, yeah, yeah. So so medieval. I think we're going to say. Uh, the longsword, I would say, is something that seems to have really had its popular roots in Germany. I don't think it's a coincidence that the longsword treatises of the 15th century, there's so many from Germany and not many from anywhere else, seem to have been regarded as a sort of German weapon. Not to say it was only from Germany, but it was most popular in Germany at the most early period. Um, so yeah, so I would say, yeah, pretty much crossbows for Italy, yeah. longbows for England. The only other two, I would add, two specific pole arms, mm. okay? And they're both bills. And this is quite an interesting one. I've only, only just come into my head. The English were famous for using bills, but so were the Italians. Mm. So whereas the Germans and the Swiss and the Austrians used halberds, they were famous for using halberds, and the French were famous for using glaives, the English and the Italians were both famous for using the bill, which you called the ronca. I believe. Ronca. Ronca. Okay. Ronca. Yeah. Right, so um, to, to wrap up, I think, before we go and have our lunch, um, Batam asks, which is cooler, Roman or British Empire? Please. His initial, re when I read this to him, his initial, initial response was, Mamma mia! Mamma mia, see, mamma mia. So on. you can't answer that question, can we, really? But one thing I will just say, in re that we should go yes. for both of them, yes. is lots of people, so Batam then says, I know both had horrific consequences, but let's keep the question fun. <laughs> I agree! Yeah. Um, and, uh, you yeah. know, I just say, actually, you know what, which is, which is cooler? Well, the British Empire covered more of the globe. <laughs> True, but okay, the one Empire. third of the world's population was yeah, in the British yeah, Empire. Yeah, but the British Empire wouldn't exist if the uh, Roman Empire had influenced you, I would imagine. No, but then you could say the Roman Empire wouldn't have existed if, if yeah, Greece or, yeah, or the Egyptians right, or, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, one class. thing I would just say, so mm. lots of, whenever you have discussions about empire and colonialism, and they were both, they were both colonists in different ways, is that I always feel that people miss the vital point that if one, have you played Age of Empires, yeah? Played Age of Empires. Play. If one doesn't succeed, someone else does, okay? And that is the whole point of empires. If the British Empire hadn't ruled a third of the globe, do you think someone else wouldn't have done? It yeah, would have been the French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if it hadn't yeah. been the French, it would have been the Spanish. If it hadn't been the Spanish, it would have been the Dutch. Everyone was trying to do the same yeah. thing. It's just that one succeeded, and it was the same with the Roman Empire. It's the same, yeah. it, you know, look at the beginning of Rome. They were fighting against the Gauls, against the Greeks, try, against try, everybody. Try, yeah, try, like yeah. if if Rome hadn't become the empire, mm. then the Gauls or the Greeks or someone else would have been. You know, mm -hmm. so and whenever we talk about empires, just remember that we really have to start thinking about alternative histories. It's not a question of Which if that yeah. empire or no empire. It's just a question of which empire. Yeah. So there we go. 
Raf driving here earlier in the car, Raf made a more interesting point, I think, about imagine if the Roman Empire hadn't fallen. Yeah. Imagine if we were all still living in harmony, maybe? Or mm. my view is that it always would have fallen. Mm. If it hadn't fallen then, eventually yeah. it, it would have fallen in you know, just the same as the Byzantine Empire fell eventually um, to, to the Ottomans the Western yeah. Roman Empire if it hadn't fallen to a mixture of the Visigoths yes. and the Germanic tribes and everyone it you know it was always going to happen mm. it could never have succeeded and kept and you know empires always fall um, and Maybe even including Galactic. Maybe Empire. even yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, maybe even the empire that we're currently living in mm. will eventually fall. And on that bombshell, we're going to say ciao for now, folks. Ciao, ciao. And um, we're going to go and enjoy some lunch. Yeah. Cheers, folks. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We have extra videos on Patreon, and you can follow us on Facebook.